this tax cut potentially could impact over 400,000 businesses licensed in the state. Uh, the state has 121,000 active businesses reporting income with the Internal Revenue Service, uh, which would be affected uh, favorably by this tax cut. Uh, over 85% of these businesses employ fewer than 20 people, and there are approximately 99,000 businesses in Missouri that employ between 1 and 19 people. Uh, collectively, these employers employ uh, just under 400,000 workers and provide an annual payroll of over $12 billion. Uh, these are the businesses which are affected by this broad-based tax cut. It's something which is important to Missouri's economy. It's something which is very important to provide fairness in our tax code system and to provide broad-based tax release for all businesses. Now, I know <clears throat> we recall just about six months ago, I stood up here along with Senator Schmidt and along with uh, the Missouri Chamber, and we proudly supported the governor's call for a special session uh, to provide tax breaks and tax relief for one business. And at that time, that was, uh, you know, arguably about $2.5 billion in tax relief and tax incentive for Boeing. And once again, we're proud to do it. We were happy to do it. We thought it was a good thing because tax policy does matter to attract businesses to the state. What was curious what was for one business on a signature piece of legislation, there was no scare tactics used with education groups. There were no scare tactics used uh, with mental health, there were no scare tact tactics used with other social services groups. So what we want to do here is we want to be fair. We want to also give tax relief and tax breaks to the 11, over nearly 12,000 restaurants in the state that would benefit from this. Nearly 2,000 child care service providers. Uh, nearly 2,000 hotels, motels, and lodging establishments. Uh, 4,000 convenience stores. 6,000 auto repair shops, uh, <clears throat> about 6,000 companies that construct single family homes in the state, and over 800 agricultural production facilities. Those types of businesses deserve the same type of tax cuts and tax relief as one big company. So I'd like to turn this over now uh, to Dan Meehan uh, with the Missouri Chamber of Commerce and Industry. John did a great job in talking about what this means to business in the state of Missouri, but also included in that is what it means to the employees of those businesses. They get a tax break too. What they get is to keep a little bit of the surplus that's going into the state of Missouri right now. Uh, it's my honor to be here with, with these elected officials, but also what we'd like to do is talk about the face of the tax cut. And we've got a couple small businesses with us today that have joined us from the Kansas City area that I wanted to introduce and just to let you know who this truly impacts. And first I'd like to introduce Jimmy Odes of Odes Brothers Tire and Auto to tell his story about his small business in Lee Summit. Jimmy? Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Uh, very simply for us, a tax reduction or a tax savings on our business will allow us the opportunity to reinvest in our employees. Uh, we're in the tire and automotive industry, so with technology going as crazy as it, as it is, uh, it affords us the opportunity to, to reinvest in uh, the technology necessary for us to work on vehicles and, uh, and basically retrain our employees. Thanks. Thank you, Jimmy. And uh, also from the Lee Summit area is Jerry Gore of Summit Technology Solutions, Technical Solutions, sorry, Jerry, another small employer who uh, would benefit by this and be able to be more competitive, especially in the western side of the state where we have uh, the border with Kansas being a street where you can move across the street and get a different tax code. So, Jerry, a few comments? Thank you. As Representative Neal was talking about the, the types of businesses that this would impact, uh, ours is one of those businesses. As well as that, I'm looking at the employees that are in all those types of businesses, especially in our business where they're not necessarily making minimum wage, but they're obviously not making a high wage. So anything that we can put in those folks' pockets moving forward benefits not only the local economy, but the state as a whole. So that's very important to me and to the business that I work for uh, in promoting that for our employees. And you see that in most of those businesses that Representative Deal talked about. So 
I, I, I'm a proponent of this particular bill. I'd like to see this go through. Uh, and I think it will impact our employees uh, for that little bit that they'll be able to take home besides what they've got now. Thank you. Thanks, Jerry. The good news is it's gone through. And it's gone through because of the work of these people that are surrounding us. And we appreciate that very much. And right now it's time for the governor to sign this into law. Uh, we've got this week to find out whether he signs it into law or vetoes it. And it's stop, time to stop the rhetoric, stop putting business, pitting business against education. That is a false key. We are not against education. This is about growing the economy. Of us, when we campaign for office and we go back home to our constituents, we talk about small business being the backbone of our economy. We talk about over 90% of all the businesses out there being small businesses. But if all you ever do is affect the tax rate for C Corps, the corporate income tax rate, you never affect them. You never are able to help them. And so, as this bill has been out there for a number of years, it's part of this broad based effort that is challenging to do. There's a reason why uh, this hasn't happened in almost 100 years. These are big issues, uh, it's worth the discussion, but we've finally gotten to a place now with this piece of legislation, which is different than last year's, which in my view is a compromised piece of legislation. It's not quite as big. I'd like to see it uh, bigger, but we're at we're at right now, uh, and I think it is time for the governor to sign this. You've got, in the St. Louis metropolitan area alone, over 54,000 businesses that can benefit from this. Just a few. You've got 76 laundromats, 104 welding operations, and 132 moving companies in the St. Louis metro area alone. The list goes on and on of the number of small businesses that feed their families, uh, employ folks in their community, <coughs> donate to particular causes, who want the opportunity to keep more of their own money, to invest it in their company, to hire more people, to buy inventory. That's how our economy is going to grow. And so, um, as we talked about how we got here, I think the other relevant point is that this issue just is not going to go away. I think a lot of us ran on this. Uh, the people are with us. And if there is a veto, our attempt is to, uh, and, I, and I hope we can override that veto. And if we're not, we're coming back um, next year. We're coming back later this year with another effort to do this. This is something I think that's a central piece of what we need to do as a state to grow and to have an economy um, that moves, that isn't just in the standstill position, but actually moving forward. We've talked about this before. Missouri has lost half of its congressional delegation in the last 70 years. Um, we are falling behind. Every state around us, except for the state of Illinois, has either done this or is pursuing some sort of broad-based tax relief measure. And so this is our effort to put it forward. And uh, this is a big week.